In today's art lab, I will show you how to sew without a needle. We'll be using yarn, tape, a hole puncher, and a piece of paper. And that is all we'll need. We don't need a needle for this. So the first thing you'll want to do is use a hole puncher to punch holes all around the edges of your paper. Each hole should be about an inch apart. You could do it closer and it'll be a more intricate sewing pattern. And it might be fun to save these punched holes. You could use these for collage later. Next, you're going to take some tape. And any kind of tape is okay. We'll be using yellow tape. Get a little bit of tape off. And then we're going to wrap it around one of the edges of your yarn. The goal is to try and make your yarn pointy and stiff. So you don't want to wrap it around really big to make this wide. Our goal is to make this as skinny as possible to make the sewing part easier. So make sure you wrap it around very tight. And I'm also wrapping it kind of diagonally around your yarn. That is going to make the handle of your yarn, the taped part, longer and easier to hold. So now I have this part wrapped around and you can see that now it's stiff and it's kind of like a needle, except it's not pokey. So the first thing you'll want to do once you wrap it around is to put your thread through one of the holes. It doesn't really matter which one. I like to start at the corner and pull it through your hole almost all the way so that there's a little bit of a tail coming out, but most of the yarn is pulled through. Next, you're going to tie this onto the paper. To tie it, you're just going to make a loop, put that tail under that loop and through and tie it off. Now we're going to want to make it make two knots so that it doesn't fall off. So you're going to do the same thing, make a loop, go under and through, and pull it all the way. Now this isn't going to fall off. Next you're going to take your needle, the wrapped up part of your yarn, and go into the next hole. Like that. Next, we're going to be starting a straight stitch. To do that, you're not going to go back to the top. You're going to start from the back this time. Find that hole and pull it through. Now you're going to go from the top. You're going to keep alternating between going up and down, up and down. Now we just went from the top to the bottom, so we're going to go from the bottom to the top. And now we're going to go down. So it's just going to be a pattern of going up, down, up, down, all the way around your paper. Once you get used to it, you could also even start to go down and up and then pull. Down, up, pull. Down, up, pull, and so forth. So we're going to just keep going. And here's a little trick. Let's say that you forgot to go. So next, this is the next hole that I want to go in. But if I forget and I skip one. And you notice, uh oh, I missed one. You can just take your needle, that's the wrapped around yarn, go back into that same hole and backtrack. Same thing if you accidentally go around your paper instead of going up and down, like this is touching the edge. That is not the type of stitch we are trying to do. So if you would like to fix that, just go back into that same hole and you can try again. Oh, 
like that. I made a mistake. So then I'm just going to go back. Oh, and I made a mistake again. So then you're just going to figure out how to untangle what you messed up on. There we go. Okay, so now I'm back to my first hole. You won't want to cut this off because first you need to tie it so that it doesn't come apart. To do that, you can either just tie it to the first tail that you started with, so make a loop, or you could practice tying using your needle. To do that, you're going to go into one of your nearby stitches, go through, and make a loop like this, and put your needle through that loop, and it makes a little knot right there. Now you're going to do it one more time. Go through the nearest stitch, put your needle through, and pull. If you do it twice, it's going to be double knotted and it won't come off. So once you have it tied off, then you can get your pair of scissors and you can cut this off. And then it won't come untied. And there we go. This is our first sewing practice. Now this is practice and it is not a finished piece of art. You could do anything in here, including drawing, painting, or collage and kind of use this stitch as frame and a design element. For mine, I think I'm going to try some paper collage. Collage is making a picture using cut up pieces of paper like magazines or construction paper. You could also use painted paper and even scraps that other people didn't end up using. There are many other materials you could use for collaging, including fabric, which is cloth, you can use yarn to glue on, you can even find pieces of recyclables, like pieces of cardboard or screws or anything that you can glue on here or securely can be used for your collage. I think I will start with some magazine pictures. I'm kind of looking more for colors and textures that I would like to try and use. So I think I will cut this page out. And I'm really liking this yellow honeycomb texture. So I'm going to cut this out. And I think I'm going to use this like that. I'm going to keep looking in my magazine. And I think I like this bright yellow color too. So I'm going to now cut this page out. And then I'm going to try and match it up to that piece. And I think I want to use it like this. I didn't have a solid idea of what I was going to make yet, but I think I want to turn this into a pineapple. So the kind of glue that we have are stick glue, which if you're going to use that, make sure that you only get a little bit out and make sure you put the cap on when you're finished. This will work great for thin paper. We also have watered down bottle glue with a brush. If you're going to use this, you're just going to brush it on and make sure you put the brush back and close the top when you're finished. We also have regular bottle glue. If you're going to use this, make sure that you open the top, twist it so that there's a gap in here, shake it a little bit, and then you're going to just do either dot, dot, not a lot, or a snail trail where you're pressing lightly and drawing a line with the glue. For bottle glue when you're finished, make sure you close it so that there's no gap between the top and the body. So I'm going to glue this on here. So it kind of matches, but the top's a little bit too big. So I'm going to actually cut this off. And there we go. Now I can flip it over. So nail trail around the edge and glue it onto my background with my frame. Now I'm going to try some interesting textures to make the pineapple leaves. You could always use your pencil to kind of measure how big you need your paper to be. So 
you can of course draw the shape that you're cutting on your paper first before you start cutting if you want. So now I have my pineapple, but it's a little bit too long. So maybe I'll trim this part. Now it fits on my paper. So I'm going to glue this on now. And I have my pineapple shape. I'm, I think I want my pineapple to have some texture to make it look bumpy. And in my magazine, I'll f I found this is interesting texture. I think I'm going to try and use this for my pineapple texture. And I want you to notice that I didn't just glue one piece of paper for each part. I am layering my pieces on top of each other. That is what is going to make your collage more interesting. So never think that you're finished when you're just done with your first layer. And then now I think I want to layer even more and maybe add a face to my pineapple. Then how about if I use these leftover little bits from sewing. Use that to make his eyes sparkly. And make sure you cut out your shapes from the corner of your paper, not right in the middle. Try not to waste your paper as much as possible. And then when you're finished with your picture, think about whether or not you should add some more design elements. You could do drawings in the background. You could do some more collage. You could do painting. It is really up to you. Now make sure that your main motif covers up a lot of your negative space. If it does, maybe you don't even need a background. But if there's a lot of negative space and a small positive space, you will definitely want to add some more designs. So I think I could add a few more things down here. The top looks pretty full, but the bottom looks a little bit lonely. So I cut out some hearts using painted pieces of paper. Painted paper gives your paper a nice texture and designs without even you having to add anything extra. So here's my cute little pineapple collage with a border made with yarn sewing. So now let's talk about cleanup. Your pieces of paper that you used. If it's really used up, like this one where there's not really much more that can be used, this can go in the recycle bin. Same with this one or these bits. But if there's still a lot that can be used by the next person, like these two or this page that I didn't use, then please put this in the scrap tray so that the next person can use it. When you put it in the tray, please make sure that you don't wrinkle it up because then the next person can't use it. Make sure that it stays flat in the scrap tray. Make sure you close the glue bottle so that the orange part is touching the white part. Make sure you close your brush on glue. Make sure you put the top on stick glue. And please return everything back where it is. Make sure names are on your collages and put it in the drawing rack because these projects have glue on it and we don't want it to get stuck to other things. 